What up? This is Rama Screen, and it's time for another celeb interview. And in the anticipation of Jiu Jitsu, which hits theaters and on demand and digital November 20th, I'm here talking with the star of this new movie, Alan Musi. How are you, Alan? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, you reunited with Dimitri on this one. So tell me, Alan, uh, what motivated you to want to collaborate with Dimitri again? And how did this project come to be? Uh, well, number one, Dimitri is the one who, who I should say, who became my, uh, I, the person who believed in me, right? Mm -hmm. um, who championed me the first time, who gave me an opportunity to, to actually start doing action films. And it takes somebody like that to believe in you. You know, you can be as skilled as you want or you can want it as much as you want, but at some point you got to convince somebody who's willing to take a chance and he did. Uh, so I had such a great experience working with Dimitri on Kickboxer Vengeance and Kickboxer Retaliation. He is a visionary filmmaker. He understands the genre. He understands what people want to see in the genre. Uh, because he's like a kid when he watches the movie. He's like me. We're kids at heart, and we want to see cool, fun, entertaining action films. Uh, so when Dimitri tells me, Elaine, we're going to do a film called Jiu-Jitsu. It's an action sci-fi. You're going to be fighting an alien. And I'm like, yes, of course we are. I mean, that's what we're doing next. I want it. Let's go. Let's do it. So he talked to me about the concept right away. And I'm like, that's awesome. And he says, listen, you've been doing jujitsu since you were a kid. I want to call this jujitsu because that's your martial art. And let's, let's do that. And it's, uh, let's expose it from its origins, which is Japanese origins, or even beyond that. And let's start from the beginning and show the full spectrum of what jujitsu is from a samurai art to all the way to modern day Brazilian jujitsu. Let's take all of it and put it in a blender and have fun with it. And I'm like, okay, there, here we go. There's a lot of fighters uh, featured in this film. Uh, Tony Ja with Muay Thai. And then you have, of course, Juju ja Chan and Rick Yoon and Frank Grillo. So when you ha have all these caliber fighters with their own uh, martial arts styles and martial art backgrounds, um, when you orchestrate the fight choreographies or the fight scenes, uh, how did you guys decide on what styles to use? Well, what, what, what we want to do is, number one, we want to use everybody's skill set that they already have. You don't want to start taking Juju Chan and Chan transforming her into something completely different that she doesn't have. I want to use all the assets that she comes with because she is so skilled, right? And same with Tony Ja. Tony Ja, I mean, you, you can't say, hey, Tony, we're not going to do your stuff anymore. We're going to do this instead. Like, no way. There's no way we're going to do that. Same with Frank. So what we decided to do is use Jiu-Jitsu as an umbrella. Hmm. Um, because we're going back to the origins and jujitsu is a blend. There's weapons work going from long range to close range striking to take gripping and takedowns to group grappling, chokes, arm locks, leg locks, all the full spectrum is there. So we're going to take, let's say Tony, let's say for example, with we're going to look at some Thai, some Muay Thai. Well, Muay Thai have striking, they have gripping, they have takedowns, they have locks. Jiu-Jitsu has gripping strikes, takedowns, and locks. Oh, cool. That means they have something in common. So let's find the common traits and put them all under an umbrella. So Tony is going to be more strength dominant, but let's put some joint locks in there to bring that Jiu-Jitsu element in there or some throws. Juju Chan does the nunchucks the masterfully, but let's add some cool ass throws in there and make her a luchador at the same time and some cool Jiu-Jitsu throws that she can do there. Let's make Wiley, Nicholas Cage's character, the samurai. So we want him to have more samurai feel. He's, he's a older, wiser, you know, let's give him that, let that little flavor again, which has a piece of jujitsu. So for me, it was, we can't make everybody the same or else it's boring. It's boring to watch. We have to make sure that every single character have their own flavor, you know, just like Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. And it really yeah. shows on the screen. So uh, good on you guys for that. And I got to ask about the, first person point of view, one take sequence that you and Tony Ja did. You know, one minute you, we only see your hands or your fists. The next minute the camera follows Tony Ja as he leaps from one building to the next. Um, what was it like shooting uh, in that format? And was that your idea? No, it was not my, I can't take credit for that one. That was uh, Dimitri and our DP uh, Madrax. Our DP Madrax, man, he's, he's I call him the mad scientist because he's like, <laughs> that's what he is, he's mad. He'll come up with ideas. It's, and he comes out, he's, uh, he's so funny, so cool. Like, Alan, um, I'm thinking, have you seen this movie, Wreck-It Ralph? They do this first person thing. 
how about we do that with that, like with Tony John and you and, and make it a one and then Dimitri adds his flavor to that. And all of a sudden it becomes a thing. And uh, I love the idea. I was like, oh my God, that's it. So I went right online and looked at some, some footage of it, of what it could be, you know, not in action that way, but just that, to have that, that, that uh, the idea of what, how we could design it. And then Jim, our stunt coordinator from Thailand came in and he went on location with his team, he strapped the camera to their chest and they started start doing all this stuff. And uh, they designed the actual sequence, the, the way they mapped out the sequence that we could have. And then I put my input for the moves and that kind of stuff that I wanted to do with his guys. And all of a sudden we're shooting this oneer with the first person. So what we did, we strapped the camera on my friend Max who was part of our Sun team. So we strapped the, he and he was, he was officially on paper, my double. So he put in the gear, he put in the camera. So when you see the hands going out like this, it's his hands, he's the one doing it. And all of a sudden I'm following him the whole time. So he's moving. And then when it's time for me to jump out, it's like, whoop, I jump out and I start doing my thing. Wow. And then oh, back in the camera and whoa, he takes up again. And he goes and follows Tony. It was like really, really cool to shoot. It was a very different experience because I never shot anything like that. It was, uh, yeah, it was quite fun. Oscar winner Nicolas Cage is in this film. Uh, this might be his first martial art role ever. I read somewhere that uh, Nicolas Cage actually had some jiu-jitsu training so uh, is that true and talk to me about uh, working with Nicholas F Cage on your fight scene together did he mostly follow your lead or did he contribute some ideas for the for the moves Nick Nick is uh, his background I think is uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu with Hoyce Gracie I think he's, he's trained with Hoyce Gracie a bit um, I don't know how long though I don't remember exactly how long he trained with Hoyce but his experience in jiu-jitsu has been with Hoyce Gracie one of the best in the world um, and then he's also has experience in other martial arts as well. I feel, I think it's a Chinese martial arts as well. So Nick came in there and he had some experience, but at the same time, he didn't come in saying, I know what I'm doing. He came in and say, Hey guys, show me what to do. And that's what he wanted. So we took the lead, our stunt team, we took the lead on showing him and we kind of went through his movements and showed him the core type of movements he would have to do in the fights. Um, as far as him having input, we showed him everything that was there. We showed him the choreography. He followed pretty much exactly what we told him to do to the T. He thought it was all fantastic and it fit his character. Um, when we designed his action, I was main, the main person who designed his action was me. And I came in there because when I design action, I don't design based on what I think would be cool to see on screen. I designed based on the character that we will see on screen. I wanted to fit the character. So, that character to me was the older, wiser mentor. Uh, and we wanted to make him old school, old school samurai. And that was the whole vision behind it. So when I told Nick this, this is what this is kind of what we see in terms of your action. These are the kind of moves. But what at the same time, we have to pepper in some unexpected things, something that nobody would think he would do. And then we're going to pepper in maybe a front flip in, we'll pepper a cool omoplata move that we have in there this like this like leg on my uh, he puts his leg on my hip and it flips around omoplata back to the ground you know so it's uh and he he's like oh my god this is so cool and he just loved it, it was like a little kid in a candy store you know he had fun <laughs> with it. so he uh he just wanted to follow and when we're on set he followed the lead he just say hey show me what to do and i'm gonna do it and we're like okay let's let's play now you've worked with such big names as jean claude van damme Mike Tyson, and now Nicolas Cage. What do you take away from that experience as an actor and a martial artist? Um, well, as a martial artist, I mean, I just see kind of what they do, where they put the importance uh, in screen fighting, you know? So in, in, with Van Damme, I mean, he's, uh, he's a master at building moments. And that's what I love about what he does. It's not about how fancy the moves are or, you know, how much choreography he's gonna do in the film. For him, it's about building the moment, the important moments through his fighting. And that, I, I totally learned. I, I learned that watching his films, but also when we worked together on set um, and we would design action uh, for him, I kind of knew where he was going with that and I used it. I definitely used that concept and I, I wanted to make sure that when we did fights, it wouldn't just numb the audience. Every single piece has to build up a crescendo to a, to a moment that everybody really, boom, and then we got to change the flow and go somewhere else and boom again. Because this way, the audience goes on a ride. That's like a roller coaster. And that's what you want to feel. You want to the ups and the downs and the arounds, you know? So I definitely learned that from Van Damme. 
Um, and then being on screen with uh, with guys like Nick Cage, I mean, and Maria Adriopoulos, I mean, it's the importance in the, the acting and the way they, they approach their characters. Um, they're so so natural. And it's the way they're able to, um, I, 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 the example I give is, they, they do with acting what I do with action. I, I, I'm, I've been doing choreography for a very long time and I have a knees with choreography. So once I understand the choreography, I don't even think of the moves. I think of everything going on in between the moves and what I'm, what my face is doing and that, that kind of stuff, right? They do that with acting where I'm thinking sometimes of words and I'm like, okay, how they're just doing it. And then there's peppering in all kinds of cool nuances. You know, every take, every take, there's something new, different. The hand goes somewhere else. You know, he does stuff like this and, and I'm looking at this, I'm like, wow, that's like, I would have never, I just thinking of like, how do I convey the words from the page and bring them up? They're like, they don't care about the words anymore. The words are already in there. It's everything else that's going on. And I took that away from both, like on this film, especially from both Nick Cage, Nick Cage showed me a lot and Maria Dropolis as well, such a solid actress. Um, and finally, Alan, um, curiosity here. Are there plans for more kickboxer installments in the near future, or perhaps another revitalization of other classic beloved martial art movies like Bloodsport, the new reboot, perhaps? Well, the yeah, kickboxer, we are going to end that trilogy. So we're, there's a third installment, it's called Kickboxer Armageddon. We're shooting oh. that in 2021. Yes. Um, I have a script already. It's already, oh yeah, yeah, it's already in the plans. It's been this, we, we actually, we were gonna do this before jujitsu. And then we switched it around. We went jujitsu first, and then decided we're going to go on um, on uh, and do finish kickboxer. And uh, the third installment is incredible. I've read the script. It's balls to the walls action. We're going to see Kurt Sloan in a way you've never seen him before, which is you know what I want. He goes super dark to go right back to the light. Um, and the type of action you're going to see is stuff you've never seen in both movies. It's just the the settings. The character, new characters coming in, the old characters coming back. I mean, it's going to be uh, such a, a great way to end this trilogy. All right. For my fans at home, everybody go check out Jiu-Jitsu in theaters and on demand and digital November 20th. Alan Musi, thank you for talking to me and congratulations, sir.